Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with Coach Jonathan Pixley in another episode of NBA Past and Present. And today is going to be a pretty cool episode. We might have, in fact, do we have a surprise I guest? I believe okay. we do. Yeah. We're going to have a surprise guest, an NBA player uh, that uh, some of you guys may be prospecting in. He's going to join the channel today. I know that's pretty rare. I think this will be the second or third NBA guy I've had on um on the channel and so we're really excited about this one because it's a player uh and, and we we always say kid like that this kid can play this kid can play he's not a kid anymore he's a grown man right and so uh we're gonna have a a, a current nba player combo guard come on our channel day and uh, and answer some rapid fire questions and we'll see how much he knows about basketball cards and about his own cards as well for a few minutes at the end of this video so stay tuned till the end you got to listen to all our crap to get the good stuff so um this is nba past and present jonathan today's episode is going to be a little bit different instead of like picking a topic and us going back and forth yeah. i decided i'm just going to throw rapid fire questions at you i'm gonna let you answer them you've got no rhyme or reason. you have no idea what i'm gonna ask you obviously We're, nothing's ever scripted ever, ever. Right. Very so obvious. it's going to be uh, organic and transparent. I'm going to ask you questions. You answer them. And then uh, and then I'll chime in right behind you and then we'll move along. Pretty rapid fire. This is going to be about a 40 minute episode total. So um, we'll get through them and I'll make sure we stay on pace. So without any delay, we're filming this on May 16th. It's Tuesday. Tonight is the Lakers Nuggets. Tomorrow night is Celtics and heat and then I think it's it's always alternating nights. Right. Is it alternating all the way through? Are there any off nights? I think it's alternating until the end. I, I think uh, it is too. So even travel days, though, even travel days, they it's every other day. I think, right? I'm not sure. I need to look. Yeah, I'm not sure. It should okay. be. Who knows? Yeah. Either way, we're filming this before either series starts, so I want to be clear about that because obviously that's going to be a, a primary topic of conversation. But I'm going to ask you a bunch of if this, this or that, right? Choose this guy, that guy, all kinds of stuff like that. So let's get cranking and let's start with. The elephant in the room, Lakers or Nuggets? You got to pick one, Lakers or Nuggets. I think uh, I I couldn't decide. I did pick the Lakers over the Warriors, but I wasn't sure uh, about this round. And I think on my sheet I picked that we talked about on one of the prior episodes, I picked the Nuggets. Uh, and I still would pick the Nuggets. I picked the Nuggets, but I think it's going to be a damn dog fight. I agree 100%. I think uh, I have Denver in seven is what yeah. I would say. Uh, but uh, – and, and really, honestly, probably the, the only reason I will – not the only reason, but one of the main reasons I'll say is because I just don't trust Anthony Davis, even though he will be the most difficult matchup for Jokic, you know. Um, so, uh, but Jokic, he's just too good, man. And then the the other guys they have are uh, the stuff that the stuff that um, the Lakers did to Golden State, where basically they just parked AD and LeBron and let them roam defensively because they're guarding two non shooters. They will not be able to get away with with Denver and with Jokic having the ball and as a passer and then the other shooters that they have on the floor as well. Yeah. I think it's two very contrasting styles, though, which let's, makes – Well, let's yeah. just start with the fact that Denver's giant and Golden State was the smallest team in the NBA. Yes. Like, there's absolutely nothing in the paint with them. And then now you're talking about the best paint player in the NBA. Right. No, you know, all deference to Embiid and his MVP award that he stole that he didn't deserve. But, like, the best big man in the NBA is Nikola Jokic, and he's proven it right now. This is a, a extremely contrasting styles between the Warriors and the Nuggets. Lakers yeah. are going to have to adjust and adjust fast, so we'll see what Darvin Ham does with them. Um, I'm thinking of the non-shooters – uh, that Golden State had. Obviously, Draymond was a non-shooter. Kevin Looney is as non-shooter as non-shooter gets, especially when you think about three-point shots. Yep. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i trying to think of Denver's rotation and who just doesn't, won't ever take threes. And I'm trying to think, obviously, Jamal Murray. Obviously, Jokic is willing. If AD parks his ass in the lane, he's going to stroke it. Um, uh, Aaron Gordon will take threes when left wide yep. open. Uh, yep. So you can't completely sag off of him. He's not the greatest. Obviously, KCP shoots it. MPJ shoots the piss out of it if he's open. That's the one thing we know he can do. Yep. Bruce Brown off the bench even shoots the thing if he's open. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But he will take it. He can make enough of them, though, man. He can make enough of them. I don't think you can gap him the way you can Draymond and Looney right. and stuff like that. This is definitely going to require an adjustment uh, by the Lakers for sure. I'm with you. I say Nuggets over Lakers, and I say Game 7. Um Celtics or Heat? I'm gonna say Celtics. Their roster is too deep, uh, you know, and, and and they do have the ability to 
offer Jimmy Butler some problems defensively uh, with Brown and Tatum and Marcus they're Smart great. to a degree. And Derek great. White, obviously. But I'm saying, like, they've got – like, I don't consider Derek White a physical defender. you gotta, you got to be a physical dude. Uh, he's, too, he's too slight to affect Jimmy Butler, in my opinion. I mean, you think about Drew Holiday is, we would agree, the best on-ball defender in the league, right? And I think, though, yes, notwithstanding Jimmy Butler impregnating him a week or two ago. He's one of the few guys that Drew Holiday could not affect, right? And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that he's too short to do yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, and so at 6'7", six, 6'8", six, I mean, Tatum's 6'9", basically, right? And so Brown's Some people six, are like, seven. yeah, pushing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's a problem. So I, I would say the Celtics are going to win the series. I will say six. Um, and I just I just think back to what we said about Miami and how quickly we dismissed them. What, we didn't even talk about the series with them in Milwaukee. You remember that? We didn't talk about it. <laughs> well, we also didn't know Giannis was going to get hurt, and then it was yeah. going to be an uphill battle, and then, you know, all anything can happen, and all hell broke loose. And, God, what a – horrific crash and burn into a season where they had a really good chance at ring number two. This, this one stings a lot for me as a Bucks collector. Jonathan, I'm with you. Um, I'm a little more I, – I think it could be a sweep. Uh, and I think the reason I say that, and I know people are like, a sweep? The Celtics hasn't swept anybody yet, and the Heat are in the finals, and the Heat have momentum. Because um, we've seen Butler wear down in the past, right? A lot is put on his shoulders – uh, and then you get no consistency from any other player. Correct. Can Adebayo go for 20 and 12? Yes. Will he? We don't know. Every Can Max Bruce hit seven threes in a game? Yes. Will he? I don't know. Uh, and so Hero's still gone. You've got Struess. Kyle Lowry is uh, pretty fat. Uh, it, it just depends on the local restaurants and the type of you know Chinese food that's in the Boston area, whether he's going to be able to even be effective in game one or two. I mean, if he stumbles upon an all-you-can-eat buffet – at like a steakhouse or something like that, there's a very good chance we don't see Kyle Lowry in this series. He might go MIA. Uh, but no, seriously, like injury, you know, there's a lot of uncertainties other than Jimmy Butler. You know what you're you're going to get from him from an effort standpoint. But you're right, man. They rotate those four guys. And I think Derek White's a little bit better than you give him credit for. I think he's more of a problem guarding Butler than Marcus Smart is for sure. Um, that's Dude, just me. Let, me. let me cut you off real quick. My, my situation is not based on matchups. Like Boston has the roster to sweep. Miami. Yeah. Okay. No question. I just think they take a game or two. They just have a couple. See, I think that's over. I think that happened. I think it happened, and I and I think that the way that they finished that Philly series with that ass whipping, I, I think that now we're going to see the real Boston Celtics. Trust me, I don't want to. As a Bucks fan, I want nothing more than Boston to suck and burn. Uh, but I just I think they're past the hump. I think they got past the hump. I think now they they are clicking. I think that. The one thing that could get the Heat two games is Marcus Smart. Just he's so dumb. He's he's such a poison to their offense. He doesn't know his role in a very Dylan Brooks type of way. The difference is he has the damn ball in his hands all the time. And for whatever reason, this kid that's coaching the Celtics has Marcus Smart finishing games when I think it should be Derek White. And I think most Celtics fans would agree Derek White and Brogdon should be finishing games, not Marcus Smart, um, because he's just a loose cannon. You don't know what he's going to do. But the difference between him and Draymond and him and Dylan Brooks and him and Patrick Beverly and all these other idiots that are in that group is that, damn, Marcus Smart has the ball in his hands all the time. Yeah. You know, and so for that reason, he kind of can control his lunacy. And the other guys really don't touch the ball enough to influence the offense that much. It's a coaching mismatch, too. It is, and and I think that that's uh, a fact. As much as it, as much as that matters, right? I mean, yeah, I think that schematically, they will make he will make it very difficult on Tatum, in my opinion. Um, well, and and I think you and I are probably the only two people who claim to know the game that would say this. I still think Jason Tatum's game is kind of stiff. And I think there are times, obviously, he's loosened up a lot. And he's a great, great player. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Yeah. But I think he has to make tougher shots than your typical superstar because it's harder for him to create space than some of the other guys. Right? Exactly. Right. And exactly. so I think that's why his percentages do this during the playoffs. Exactly. exactly. When he's on a heater, he's yeah. amazing. And he is a top 10 player in the world. And then – but then you see these games and these series where he just struggles to create space and open looks. Like he's just, he's really not, and I, he's a pretty good athlete vertically, but he's just not, 
explosive to the point where he can create all that space to get shots off like some of these other guys can. He's just not that guy. Right. Um, all right, question number three, Booker or Mitchell? you got to build your franchise around one of these players, Donovan Mitchell, Devin Booker. And I know this is, is – it's kind of a trick question because – you know, Booker looked really, really good in the playoffs, notwithstanding the last game. And then Mitchell's flamed out a little bit earlier than a lot of people thought in a series where they were favored. Uh, but Booker or Mitchell to build your franchise around. I think these two guys are both pure shooting guards in a league where we're kind of running short on true pure shooting guards. I think of Bradley Beal, Mitchell, Booker, and then um, Clay Thompson as like true shooting guards, as in '90s definition of shooting guards: Reggie Miller, Michael Jordan, etc. Yeah. What do you think, Booker or Mitchell, to build your franchise? Booker, it's not even close. Not close. I don't, I don't even have a discussion about Mitchell with, and I, and I think Donovan Mitchell's a great player. I really do. Yeah. I just think Booker's ceiling is so much higher, and I disagree with you on uh, Booker. And Mitchell being in the same discussion as a true shooting guard. Really? Why? Because because Booker's definitely a two, don't get me wrong. But he also, I mean, look, he had how many games where he had eight, nine assists in this last series where he can facilitate. I, yeah. Look, what, just put it this way. How many true point guards are in the league, right? I don't Running think short. there are point guards. I think there are guards, and I think there are playmakers, and I think Booker proved to me that yep. he actually can facilitate. Now, the question I have is this. Yeah, he looked phenomenal. Did he look phenomenal because he has Durant on the other wing? That's the question. Right? I think he just looked phenomenal, dude. I don't, I don't, I don't. I think you could have put Bradley Beal over there or uh, freaking yeah. Michael Porter Jr., and he still would have looked phenomenal. I mean, he's the one who shot the balls that went in at an 80% clip. So I mean, He's a killer. I believe he's a killer. I'm yeah, not I believe sure he's nasty. Yeah, Mitchell, Mitchell is that. I think he can be at times, but Booker is always that guy. He thinks he's that yeah. guy. You know. I think we also saw that Booker can be a little bit better defender than Mitchell, uh, and that matters. And then you're right as a playmaker. I, I think you're downselling Mitchell as a playmaker. I think he could. I just don't think it's been he's been called upon to do it because he's got Darius Garland. Whereas when Chris Paul got hurt. And we've seen Booker do this in the past because Chris Paul is oft injured. Um, you know, we know Booker can do it, and we just, you know, we see it. And, and again, it's easier to rack up assists when Kevin Durant's, you know, your wing than when, you know, Jetty Osmond or Karis LeVert or fill-in-the-blank dipshit is your three. Um, so, um, well, too, though, you, you bring that up. I, I, think what I agree with you. I think what Cleveland proved, though, too, with Mitchell is Cleveland's roster is very overrated. Like, I didn't realize that until the playoffs. Darius yeah. Garland is a really good point guard, but we have saw what Evan Mobley is, at least today. And Jared yeah. Allen is what Jared Allen is. Dude, New York's roster is better than theirs, top to bottom. It's better. I'll tell you what, New York has a deep roster, and that's one thing the Cavs do not have is a deep roster. They've got a, a fantastic four, and Mobley and Jared Allen were not that fantastic. No. Uh, the Knicks have a deep roster, man. There's some dudes on the Knicks, like, for instance, like Obi Toppin. Yeah. He's an afterthought for the Knicks. And Obi Toppin would have mattered a lot for the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff. Hartenstein would have probably helped the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, so just it's the interesting. I bring it up here. interesting. Here's the reason I bring it up. I think the better comparison is Brunson or Mitchell. Who would you rather? Mm. And I would have never thought. I mean, last year that would have been a no, no discussion. Mitchell yeah, no been, discussion. Right. Yeah, that's tough, uh, and that's another. Yeah, that's not that's not a bad comparison. Uh, I agree with you. I do take Booker. Um, I think he's a little bit better defender. I, I do think he is probably a little bit better creator who could slide over and do some one point guard type stuff. He's also is he pushing six seven, and yeah, Donovan six, Mitchell six two. I think he's like six five six six. The other thing about Booker too that I saw him do in the playoffs more that he hadn't done a lot of is he shoot he needs he needs to shoot more threes, uh, and he and I know he did. Uh, but he has games where he, you know, he's living in that mid range. And, I, and why, why I can't he take a three? Why, his shot is absolutely, it's got to be top five in the league. It's, it's Flawless. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. 6'5, 206, they list him at. Mitchell's, you know, 6'2. So you've got the shortest shooting guard, alleged shooting guard in the league mm -hmm. uh, versus Booker, who's kind of premium prime. You know, he's probably 6'6, 210, to be quite yeah. honest with you. But, uh, uh, and he's got the killer instinct. I don't know. We'll see. But I agree with you. I think Booker um, – I don't think it's a blowout, but I think Booker. Um, yeah. Next question. 
Jokic or Giannis, does either one of these guys, you had to gamble, you have to gamble on this, does either one of them ever win another MVP award? Yes. You know how voters are. We saw it this year. Yeah. You know how they are. They will at some you point. They will. You think one of those guys wins an MVP at some point for the remainder of the year? They both have prime years left. I mean, they both have prime years. I think there's a chance both of them win one more. You think so? Yeah, is it more likely that both of them win another one or that neither one of them ever wins another one if you had to bet money? <laughs> That's a good yeah, question. Really. I think it's more likely both of them win one more. You think so? Okay. Because there's a lot of people that are knocking on that door, man. Yeah, but then then the, the good thing for both of them is how poorly Embiid played during the playoffs. So it, yeah. it shows. Oh, Embiid's window's closed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, number one. Dude, did you see his stats drop off in the playoffs? Have you seen it? No, I haven't looked. I heard it on, a, on Zach Lowe's podcast. It's really bad? He went from 33 to 23 points per game. In a well, playoff. again, let's let's be fair. He was at least a little bit dinged up. I don't know if he was as injured as they I, let it on to be, but that's – I don't trust that at all. You know, you know that. Yeah. Okay? He went from 55 to 44% shooting. <sighs> that's a big drop off. Dude, that's a, big that's a seven-footer. Yeah. He yeah. shot 18% from three. Yikes. Yeah, he goes through phases of shooting that three ball. Okay. Go ahead, move on. Next you one. think Jokic and Giannis, some, either one of them, or maybe even both of them win another MVP. I would probably think between the two of them, the over-under on future MVPs for those two is one. That's where I would set the over-under for them combined future MVPs. That's just me. Uh, if Boston doesn't win a title, do they keep Brown and Tatum together? Or does it matter if they lose to the Heat versus losing to the Nuggets in right. seven games? You it think does. that matters? Yeah, they break it up if uh, if they let's, don't have if they lose to Miami. Lose to Miami. Let's say they lose to Miami. You think they busted up this summer? You think game one, two thousand twenty three, twenty four season? You think Brown and Tatum are not together? That's my guess, especially considering how much money you're going to have to pay Jalen Brown. Yeah, he's super max now. Yeah, um, interesting. But if you think if they go seven with Nuggets in the final, they lose. Yeah, what, well, if they win the finals, they clearly don't break it up. We can all agree on that. What if they go seven and lose the Nuggets? Oh, I think they stay together. I think, it, you I think, think they, they try to move smart and Robert Williams. If they make the finals and they get shellacked, then they break it up. But if it's if it's really? a series and competitive, yeah, yeah, which I think it would be. You know, The first uh, order of business is, is trying to package a Robert Williams with a Marcus Smart or something like that yeah. and get a little bit – more uh get a, a little bit more of a true I think a true point guard um I, I like Derek White I like Malcolm Brogdon and I like the fact they play both sides although Brogdon's kind of tailed off a little bit on the defensive side and they got good size for that position but I don't think they're championship level starting point guards I do I think do Brogdon, you I you think, think Brogdon, Brogdon can be because the wings are so freaking good yes I think he is actually a perfect fit if they're together um, if you're asking him to go be a creator all the time, that's a problem. But I think um, that helps. Think how good they would be if they had a De'Aaron Fox type player. And I don't, Fox is a big ask, but I mean, a guy like that, like a guy that is always getting other people open that, that people can't keep in front of them. Pass first guys I'm talking about, Yeah. you know? Well, who's that? Uh, LaMelo Ball, to, uh, you know, um, Fox. Um, Tyrese Maxey. He's not a pass first guy. You think Fox is a pass first guy? Well, he's not a pass first guy where he's at, but I mean, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just talking about guys that can get into the paint and, and impose a young Chris Paul, you know. And again, these are these are some Paul Fan guys. I'm, I'm talking yeah. about like, I'm trying to think of somebody who's pass first, like a Rondo type guy okay. would be. I, I think it's great. But I think you got to have a shooter, though. I think that guy's got to be able to make That shot. guy's got to shoot it. Yeah. Because Marcus you got to, yeah. Marcus Smart doesn't. But, it, I mean, I guess he makes some – I don't know. Anyhow, I think Brogdon's a good fit as long as those two guys are together. I think what you you need is Robert Williams to be healthy all the time. I really think that's a huge – I'm worried about him, man, because he's still not healthy. And it's yeah. the same stuff over and over. Uh, next question. Are we 100% sure? Are we are we 100% sure that Tatum is better than Jalen Brown? Yes. Okay. Definitely. I, I didn't say more talented. I no, I know, I know. I'm just saying. I know Jalen Brown can't dribble, and then Tatum can't go by people 90 percent of the time. Then he has these weird games or these months where he shoots, you know, 42 percent from the field. We're sure that Tatum is better than Jalen Brown. 
I, I'm sure he is right now because I think he has a killer in him that Jalen Brown hasn't shown yet. I don't know if he hasn't shown it because he plays with Tatum. So, That's what I'm asking. Like, yeah. do we know, like, if 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 they break this thing up, let's say they break these two guys up and, you know, Jalen has his own team and now Tatum has his clear-cut own team and doesn't share FGAs or that position, whose numbers are going to look better at the end of a regular season? Does, does Jalen Brown, what it comes down to, does Jalen Brown have the capabilities of being the best player on a championship contender? Yeah. And I don't know that. I don't know. So Tatum maybe I don't know. Maybe Tatum I don't know. almost was already. Yeah, maybe I don't know, though. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he goes – I mean, who would he go to, though, that's a contender I, I don't know. that he's the best player? I'm, I'm terrible at these hypothetical trade machine things. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's not Milwaukee. Uh, it's not Philadelphia. It's not Denver. It's yeah, not but, but Jonathan, the NBA changes quick, and Jalen Brown's still a young dude. I mean, Jay, the Pistons could be the best team in the league in four years. Shit happens in this league. It's, it's mind-boggling. I mean, the Nets were sucked ass, and then suddenly the Nets were the favorites, and now the Nets suck ass again. And that all that happened in like three years. I'm going to tell you where he fits, and he's not the best player, but he makes them immediate like favorites, I think, is if Golden State were to pull that deal off with Wiggins and Poole. And him. Mm. I don't think I think Boston would be foolish to do that. Um, but you know, think about that deal. But, yeah, but that, that's not a point guard. Where are they gonna play all those guys? That's a money deal to me. That's a yeah. right, that's so anyhow. Yeah, um, yeah I, I don't um, think so. we'll see. I'm 99% sure Tatum's better than Jalen Brown, which is hard for me because I'm with Jalen Brown. I like Jalen Brown better. Um, I don't think his IQ offensively is high either, man. I don't who, who? Jalen Brown. I don't, well, I don't think, think either one of their IQs offensively. <laughs> I, I mean, Tatum is a score. I, I get it. I mean, he scores shit out of it. I don't think Tatum makes his team better the way that Jokic or Doncic sure. or For LeBron sure. or any of these other mega superstars make their team better. Even in Embiid, who led the league in scoring, I think Embiid makes the players around him better more so than Tatum. That's the thing that's lacking for me and Tatum. Yeah. And again, Jay, not that Jalen Brown does that either. Um, the Jalen Brown thing that's really bothering me is I don't understand why he can't dribble. Right. I don't understand why his handles are so bad. I yeah. don't understand that. Like somebody who's that elite, who's got so much talent and so, such a skill set and, and checks so many boxes. Why why can't he dribble a basketball proficiently? And, and look, you you are you're right. Like I'm 99 percent sure too that Tatum's better, but I'm also 100 percent sure that Jalen Brown was better in the finals last year. He was, and that and then again, yeah. yeah. Uh, next question: You have to sign one of these guys on your team. You're an NBA GM. Oh you have to take on one of these two guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling from a list of like four guys that you're going to hate. You've got to take on Marcus Smart or you've got to take on Dray Draymond Green. Though you've got to take one on your roster. Which one are you which grenade are you jumping on? You got to tell me my roster though, man. No. There this is the first player on your roster. Oh my god. Okay. This is your, this is where you're starting your franchise with a heart and soul. This is going to be the motor. This is going to be the Marcus personality Marcus of your Marcus team. Marcus you take Marcus smart. Yeah, Marcus Smart. No, 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 no. This is not going to be the personality of my team. No, it's too late. You, well, when you take one of them on, it is. So, no, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. He's not the personality of Boston. He he wants to be, but he's not. Uh, he thinks Raymond he would definitely be that, no matter where he goes. Both of them would think they are. Let's put it that. Both of them would call themselves the heart and soul of your team. You would take Marcus Smart on your team over Draymond Green. Grut begrudgingly, yes. Man, I don't like making choices. This is causing me anxiety. I don't like these choices. I'm just glad you didn't use Dylan Brooks because that'd have been an easy. Well, choice. that's an easy choice. He he would be the last play, and well, him and Beverly would be the two last players. Brooks would you be would last. who Brooks would be last. Well, no, no, I agree, but like you would take Marcus Smart or Draymond over Beverly. Oh, because these even two even these two guys at least contribute in some way. Not but even, even though Dylan Brooks is is a more valuable or a, a less least valuable. Than Patrick Beverly, I'd still take Patrick Beverly over Dylan Brooks. I can't, I can't look at Dylan Brooks anymore. Nope, nope. In any way, and, and luckily, I'm not going to be in Shanghai anytime soon, so I'm not going to have to watch him play. Nope. God willing, come on, come on, get over there, get over to the, get over to the Asian, get over the Asian basketball league. Yeah. Uh, Lamelo Ball or Tyrese Halliburton to run your franchise as the point guard for the next five years. Uh, Lamelo Ball. Let's presume that we've seen the last of his injuries. Let's presume he's healthy. We've seen the last of his ankle injuries. A much bigger, more consistent, uh, predictable sample size from Tyrese Halliburton in those numbers. Uh, but the upside, i got to believe the upside for LaMelo Ball might be a pinch higher just from a size and a speed standpoint. But, but Tyrese Halliburton's like a 
at this point, he's like a can't miss. Like he is an asset to any team. He's a fantastic point guard. What do you think? LaMelo or Halliburton? You got to roll a dice on one of those. LaMelo is a more talented dude, uh, although Halliburton is much more talented than I gave him credit for uh, before the year started. Uh, I'm going to take Halliburton. And the only reason I'm going to take Halliburton is I'm not sold yet that LaMelo Ball plays winning basketball. That's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Halliburton as well, which is rare because I'm the risk taker between the two of us. I'm the risk taker. Uh, I like Lamelo Ball's upside. I think Lamelo Ball can throw passes no one else in the league can throw, uh, or very few people can or ever have been able to throw or see. Uh, But I know 100% that Tyrese Halliburton makes the players around him better. He is a consummate professional, and every single person wants him on his team. And there are no distractions to the sport of basketball. Whereas with Lamelo. A lot, it seems like a lot of shit going on around him. I'm not saying he doesn't love to play basketball, but yep. I don't know if he's a total buy-in the way Tyrese Halliburton is. I mean, Tyrese Halliburton is the next Lillard, McCollum, you know, true professional basketball player. You know what I mean? Yeah. He follows yeah. in that mindset of just, like, true pros. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and um, he, he can average, you know – what did he average? Ten assists a game this year almost? Or was he right it's at it? Good, dude. On a, on a, yeah, who's he throwing the ball to? Start naming the wings. Start that's naming the wings. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, when your yeah. best, your most talented kid is, you know, Matherin, I mean, honestly, he didn't even start most of the year. So he did. Yeah, I, I take Halliburton. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can a Mavs team with Kyrie and Doncic in the backcourt? No. no, no. They can't win a title no matter what you put no. around them, you know, no, within no, no, no. reason. They'll never make the finals because Kyrie, the Irving has, Kyrie Irving will never step foot in the finals again, ever. Well, that's not let's ever. We don't know. Let's stop. We don't know how things are going to shake out, and you don't know who's around him. What I was getting at is, can can two guys that struggle that much on the defensive end? Can you even surround them with enough defensive? And let me just tell you, the Mavericks are far from having enough, but. Let's just say in a perfect world, some kind of trade is worked out and they bring in Robert Williams or Jared Allen um, and then, you know, uh, an Adebayo type or an Aaron Gordon type guy, right? And they try to plug all three holes at the three, four, five with just really high-end defensive guys. Is there enough defense in the world at those other three positions to fill in the holes that are in the boat because Doncic and Kyrie are trying to guard the other team's back? Corey Irving is one of the two. I'm just okay. telling you, there, there, there are players you could do it with, you know, Luca and I, I don't know, name another non-defensive, really good offensive player who's not a freaking problem and rips shreds every franchise he's with. Okay, yeah. put that guy there, and I think you could do it. You can't get past the personality problems. You can't get past. I it. just can't get past the. Document. I don't blame you. I can't either. I think the answer is no. I, I said it right when they made the trade. I was like, this is gonna be one of the worst trades in the NBA. They That's better right. sign and trade. They yes. better get Kyrie Irving out yes. of town now. Yes. Or they are literally going to take Doncic's prime of his career and then you may as well throw it into a black hole. 100%. 100%. Come see me in 2028 when Doncic is trying to win a ring with somebody else because it ain't happening with Kyrie Irving there. It ain't happening. It ain't I don't happening. think so either. Uh, who are you more done with? Okay, you. This is you personally. Who are you more just completely – you're done. You're completely done. Don't bring their names up ever again when it comes to relevant NBA basketball title contending. Harden or Kawhi? Harden. Kawhi's Harden, done it. Harden, Kawhi's done it. What? Harden's never done it. Kawhi's done it before. No, no, I know. But, I mean, from this point forward, are you more sick and tired of Harden uh, shrinking or disappearing yes. in the moment? Or Kawhi Leonard always, always getting injured and never being there when the team needs him to play? Like, which one is – is comp- can either one of these guys ever be relevant again No, on I a contending team? Kawhi's going to retire, first of all. But um, I think – Harden doesn't have it. Kawhi, I can at least, even though, yes, it's going to continue to happen what's happened, I can at least go back in my mind and go, okay, he's done it before, so I can deal with your injuries for the rest of your life more than I can deal with James Harden. Yeah. It's a tough one because, uh, you know, well, it's weird. I thought Harden was going to kind of shake it this year, and he was moving in that direction, and he had some big games, and he stole a game one against the, the Celtics without an Embiid. And so I was kind of happy for the guy, I guess. Uh, I don't collect the guy, and I'm not a huge Harden fan. But And then with Kawhi, um, it's just more of the same. And so I, 
I don't think either one of them are going to be relevant for very different reasons. Um, and you're right, one of them's been there and done that. At least you know that. Uh, all right, next question. Fox or SGA is your franchise? Last question because our special guest has shown up. Special guest has shown up. Special yes. guest is in the building. Yes. Uh, Fox, well, let's see. I've only got one question. Damn, well, then let's jump to the let's jump to the killer here. Tonight's the lottery. Did you know that? I did. Okay. Uh, let me give you the breakdown, and I, you may know this. Pistons, 14%. Okay. Rockets, 14%. Spurs, 14%. Okay, Rockets, Spurs, Pistons. Hornets, 12.5%. And then here's the sneaky one, right? This is the sneaky one. Blazers are 10.5%. I know. Isn't that crazy? Magic, who are loaded with young talent yep. and are very needy in this one three-guard position, are at 9%, 3-4 position. Uh, Blazers and Magic are intriguing. So this is my question for you. Um, which team makes the biggest jump in the win column next year? Uh Forget the Wimby thing. We're going to talk about that in a second. But which team do you think wins more games next year than they won this year by the biggest margin in the NBA? Orlando. Um, and I'm taking I'm taking into account that I I can't have Wimbanyama go to Houston because when Harden ends up there, they need to burn the franchise down. How can uh, he go there? How can they want him? I don't understand why. It doesn't make any sense. But anyhow. Uh, I think Orlando does. I think they. I think they make the biggest jump next year. Okay, uh, with, with or without women, Yama. With or without. Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, OKC if they were in that mix, possibly would uh, yeah. with Chet coming back. But yeah. um, all right, look, we have our special guest, so I'm gonna bring him in. One, y'all got to get to work. I'll let you introduce him. Okay. How much time do I have with the special guest? Do I have 10 yeah. minutes before y'all work out? You're the one who needs to go stretch, and you're just rebounding. You have an eight to 10 minute. You have a 10 minute cap. For sure. I'm on. I'm ready. All right. I'm ready. So I'm just coming on like this. Or yeah. You ran in drops. Listen, you got big, big <laughs> shoes to fill. You got big shoes to fill. What's up? You doing good? Man. Been a minute. Guys, we got Skylar Mays, most recently of the Portland Trailblazers, uh, in town in Baton Rouge, his hometown, to get a, a couple workouts in with Coach Pixley. Skylar, I'm gonna hit you with a bunch of Q&A, but before we start that, uh, tell me about your current status, because I'm checking in with picks here and there. Uh, like, what's your status? <laughs> you got a little anxiety building up? Yeah, I mean, it's been a uh, it's been a big shakeup these past three years since I left, you know, basically since the pandemic started. So yeah. I've kind of tried to, just been trying to find my way, but, you know, uh, you know the way I am, man. Like, just working, man, just staying ready for any opportunity and, Obviously, the latest opportunity has been Portland, and, you know, they gave me a chance to hoop, and, you know, I tried to do the best I could, so hoping I can build off it, but, you know, just focusing on what I can control and uh, keeping it there. Yeah. So, I, this channel is about basketball card collecting. Pix and I talk about NBA basketball and prospects, and, you know, NBA basketball. We argue forever, just like we did when we were coaching you, but uh, it's about basketball cards. Did you ever collect? Did you ever collect any cards, basketball, baseball, football, anything as a kid? I didn't, man. You didn't? No. no. That's all I have for you. No, I'm just kidding. That's good. So here, let me just tell you this. I, I collect Damian Lillard cards. Lillard's kind of one of the guys that I collect. I don't know if you got to spend some time with him. I know he was out while you were up there, so y'all's past didn't cross as far as on-court stuff. Those guys really liked you. Like, I have a group of guys that I talk to that are Portland. They love Portland Blazer basketball. They want you to get back up there. They want you to sign and stick around up there. Did you get along well with Chauncey? I mean, what's he like? What's the story with with Chauncey? What was your relationship like with him? Yeah, it was easy with Chauncey. It's just, you know, it's just two point guards talking. So, like, you know, we talk who pretty easy. And, uh, you know, he's got a great energy about him. Uh, he, you know, the confidence that he carries. You know, I, I loved watching him play back then. I was a little young at the time. Yeah. I remember watching him play and. Uh, always been a big fan of him, and, you know, he's got a great presence about him there. You know, Chauncey's career didn't get off to the smoothest start either. I don't know if y'all talked about that. You know, he was drafted by the Celtics. They gave up on him really quick. Went oh. to Denver. That didn't work out. Then ended up with the Pistons, and the rest is, you know, obviously he's a freak when he went to the Pistons and won titles and all that. But uh, so, you know, stuff happens like this. Sometimes, uh, you know, God's plan is not for you to just jump in and kill it from the jump, but uh, I don't need to tell you that. Shade on Sharp, how athletic is he? He's awesome, man. Like to be 19, like I, I was super impressed with him. It was really fun uh, playing with him. Uh, but he's one of the most talented guys, you know, I've ever 
just played with, you know, just Is he the bounciest? bounciest dude. I played with Marlon Taylor. So I think it's like might be between those two. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> that's right. Nobody's gonna know who that is, by the way, but us, right? And the people in, on this on this pod right now. But yeah, Marlon Taylor's a pretty bouncy cat as well, man. I, I think Marlon may have him beat, but Sh- Shaden's a little longer. But yeah, dude, Shaden's nineteen. Like he's he's really good. He's gonna be the real deal. Um, is a pop quiz. What is the most expensive Skylar Mays basketball card that's ever sold? I'm putting you on the spot. Not a card collector. I'm guessing forty-five dollars, maybe fifty dollars. Skyler, you got to believe in yourself. Are you crazy? I haven't you done crazy? much yet, man. I gotta. It, it'll be worth a lot by the time I'm done. But Skyler, right there, nine hundred and ten dollars, my friend. I'm doing pretty good. You're doing okay, man. Nine hundred and ten dollars, and you got a bunch right after that. Nine ten. 8, 10, 7, 50. You got some, you got some cred, man. There's some believers out there and myself included. You got some believers out there. Yeah. Uh, and then let me ask you this question. Cause I'm asking you the questions that kind of card collectors always want to ask NBA players. Right. So you've signed a bunch of cards for Panini. Yeah. How many do you think you've signed? Guess. Maybe how many signatures did I probably do? How many actual Scholar May signatures? Probably, uh, Close to 30,000, maybe. Holy crap. Are you yeah. serious? Like come in, like Panini sends them in, like, so it would be like 50 sheets with like maybe 100 stickers on them. Yeah. It, it, do you remember signing any on the card? It's on the card itself. Like sometimes do they ship you the cards where you, no. not yet. They just give you the, they just give stickers. You the stickers. Yeah. And they come in, they come in loads. So I've probably done that. I would say I've probably done that six times. So I think okay. that was a, uh, that's number. insane. Sometimes it'll come 5,000, sometimes 10,000. So like, yeah, it would be long days and you have like a set amount of time to uh, return them. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, you know, there's a rumor out there that Luca gave all his shit to his mom and she signed all of it. So that's the rumor, right? Because his signature changes. Yeah, he probably signed way more than I did. So. Yeah, mom, take these, right? I'll be back in about four hours. So uh, that's the rumor about, about the Luca signing. Uh, Seth signed with McNeese, your brother. A lot of people don't know. Like, yep. Skyler comes from a huge basketball family here in Baton Rouge. So your brother just recently, did he commit or did he actually sign? I can't remember. He committed. I think he committed. He okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so we're excited for him, excited for him to get on board. Just starting college, he's the last one. I have a big family period, you know. Yep. He's, he's the youngest of eight, so we got the eighth one going to college. And uh, bright future, man. We're really excited for him. Yeah, that's exciting. I, I did catch some clips of his u team. It doesn't look like your u team. The surrounding parts don't look quite the same. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not quite. But Not I love quite. this rolling, man. It's, it's funny because – you know, I'm obviously on the road a ton, and when I come back, like, there was this one stretch where I came back, and he's, like, taller than me now. So and Is he taller? Yeah, his, his wingspan's longer than mine. Like, he's got he's got great size. Uh, just got to put it all together, you know? Yeah. So, you know what's you know what's funny? When I watch his clips, I see I see little pieces of Spencer. I see little pieces of you. When I see a, a spin move, you know, I see that from you. But then that like long stuff where he extends, but he doesn't really jump. He just extends and still gets enough space. I see Spencer like kind of ground bound, but like finding ways to finish. Right. Uh, that's exciting, man. I know y'all got to be excited. Hopefully, y'all can get up there and catch a, a bunch of games when you got time. Uh, last question. This is it, right? You're in the Red Storm gym where it all started, right? Where you used to play club basketball, AU basketball. You're getting trained by Coach Pixley. Right now, right this second, I'm not talking about in his prime, right now, who's a better shooter, you or Coach Pixley? And is it even close? You know, Pixley's having some shoulder issues right now. Are you sure? Huh? I mean, you really think he is having shoulder issues? You think he just doesn't want to shoot it? He's been throwing the ball a lot more with his left, so. But, I mean – Dude, I don't think I have them yet. Picks used, okay. to, picks used to shoot it, man. So yeah. uh, I got some work to do, but you know, before it's all said and done, I'll have them. I'll have them be pretty good. What's the plan? Yeah, well, that's a really boring ass answer, like you would give to like a real reporter or something. But <laughs> yeah. you, know, you need to be like, it's not close. It's me. It's me. Uh, what's the What's the plan for the rest of the summer? Just working, man. Uh, I, I I think. Um, well, I know I go up to Portland later in the month. And, you know, just trying to solidify something, but, you know, um, just staying, staying in the work, staying in the gym, uh, yeah. working out with picks. It's been great. He's, he's really uh, helped me 
um, since we really got back into it, like around pandemic time. And, you know, we've really been putting a lot of work in. So, you know, uh, like I finished last season off really well. So I'm looking to build on it for next season. You absolutely did. It was a great, I call it an audition, right? I've, I've talked about you a couple of times on the channel and it's, it was basically an audition. You know, I think it was two ten days back to back or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, your surrounding parts weren't the actual Trailblazers roster, but I thought you were fantastic, you know, playing on the ball, a little bit off the ball. I wish you would had the ball a little bit more, but, you know, that kind of tends to happen at the end of a season where the playoffs aren't in the picture is it's an audition, not just for you, but for everybody else that was on the court as well. So I get it, you know. I felt like I was watching like a John Lucas camp or something like that where people were taking turns, but uh, you made the most of it and I thought you were fantastic. Um, man, I appreciate it. We'll have to get you on the channel for a longer deal here. And I need to get over there and rebound for him and throw you some better passes. He's never passed. So if he's the guy that's throwing passes to you, man, your percentages would go way up if I got in that gym and made those passes. So I'm going to try to get over to the gym sometime. I know y'all go early, but uh, but I'll change out of these real clothes and, uh, and come out there and rebound for you guys and, and get you some help. You are always welcome, my man. Cool. Cool. Well, thanks for joining the channel, man. Y'all go get your work in and keep us posted. Text me and let me know or hit me on Instagram and let me know. When this thing is solidified, I have confidence something good's gonna happen this summer, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna see you on the court first game uh, next season, 2023. God willing, man, I hope so. But I appreciate it, man. We'll tap in for sure, though. Of course, All right, work. All right, bro. All right. Yep. Take care. Blessings, man. All right, guys. Cool. Hopefully, uh, y'all enjoyed our surprise guest, Skylar Mays. If y'all don't know him, go check him out. He's easy to find on Instagram. Go check out his YouTube highlights. He had a really great end of the season. Uh, in Portland this year with two back-to-back -back 10 days where he looked really good, put up some really good numbers. Uh, working on his shot with Coach Pixley, uh, who's always a guest of the uh, Cajun Cardboard YouTube channel. He's a great human being on and off the court, Skyler I'm talking about. And uh, hopefully he has a bright future. We've got a long history of guys from Louisiana uh, getting to the league and latching on with the Garrett Temples and the Glenn Davises and – uh, you know, Robert Williams is there now. We can go down the list. Lots of great uh, NBA players come out of the uh, great state of Louisiana. So um, uh, you guys go check out Skylar. Go give him a follow on Instagram and, uh, and on YouTube and whatnot. And we will uh, definitely have him on the channel again um, at some point, hopefully this summer while he's in town. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, enjoy the playoff games starting tonight. I'm filming this again on Tuesday, May 16th. So whenever you watch it, hopefully I sound like a genius and it's a uh, uh, the Nuggets and the Celtics in the finals, and I think the Nuggets are going to win that thing probably in seven games in the finals. Thanks for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby, and peace.